What are the four basic facts about atrial fibrillation that will tell you everything you could possibly ever want to know about atrial fibrillation? There are just four. Number one, the good news is that atrial fibrillation is not considered to be a directly dangerous, life-threatening heart rhythm. Look, there are 13 to 15 different abnormal heart rhythms or arrhythmias that people can develop problems with in their lifetime that specialists like myself see on a regular basis. And remember, an abnormal heart rhythm is defined as an abnormal source of electricity that forms in a different wall of your heart in a separate area different from the normal source of electricity that's in the roof of your heart. And remember, your heart runs on electricity, so whichever source of electricity is in control it's telling your heart to beat at a certain speed. It's sending out electricity at a certain speed, telling your heart to beat at that speed. So if you're under the control of an abnormal rhythm source, an abnormal source of electricity that randomly wakes up, can sleep and do nothing, or randomly wake up, and takes over control of your heart, and then tells your heart to randomly go at some super fast speed, if that's the definition of an abnormal heart rhythm, the good news is that atrial fibrillation will never make your heart go at a dangerous, life-threatening heart speed. Why? Because atrial fibrillation, while it can go at almost any speed at once, the speeds at which it tends to go at have an upper limit. Atrial fibrillation makes your heart go at what we call exercise speeds, speeds that you could get your normal rhythm to speed up to with vigorous exercise. Whereas the dangerous life-threatening heart rhythms, the ones that ha can kill you right away, they can make your heart go so fast that you're not pumping blood to your brain and you literally pass out and die within 20, 30 minutes. Literally speeds of two, three, 400 beats per minute. And that's what you see on TV when people just suddenly collapse and you have to shock them with the paddles to shock the dangerous rhythm back to sleep and get their normal rhythm to take back over control of the heart at a normal speed. Atrial fibrillation is thankfully not one of those dangerous rhythms that can directly kill you. Number two, atrial fibrillation is mostly treated for symptoms. Look, if atrial fibrillation will never make your heart go at a speed fast enough to cut off blood supply to your brain and make you pass it and die, then we're just treating symptoms. And that's where everyone's different. Everyone's at a different stage of atrial fibrillation, meaning how many of these AFib cells they have in the walls of their heart and how many walls, because the more walls you have filled with AFib cells, the more often it wakes up and the more time you spend in it. So everyone's in a different stage and everyone's speeds at which they go into atrial fibrillation vary. See, you can't always tell if you're out of rhythm. You can tell if your heart seems abnormally fast, but if it's not that fast, you may not even know you're in an episode of atrial fibrillation. What if your normal rhythm source was telling your heart to go at a normal speed of 60 to 70 beats per minute? And then the atrial fibrillation abnormal heart rhythm wakes up and makes your heart go at 80 or 90 beats per minute. That's just a little bit faster than your normal rhythm source speed. You may not even know you're in an abnormal rhythm. Or it could make your heart go at 150 beats per minute, like you're running full tilt on a treadmill and you'd feel severe palpitations. So it's not always how much atrial fibrillation, it's what speed that helps determine more what kind of symptoms. Look, I see people with atrial fibrillation all the time, and I've done this for over 20 years. I sometimes see people who are in AFib 90 to 100% of the time, but their average heart rate in AFib is 80 to 90 beats per minute, and they barely feel it. And they say, look, unless you tell me, I don't even know I'm in atrial fibrillation. Or on the other extreme, I may see somebody who's only in it three to 5% of the time, where they're 95% or more not in it, because they're at a very early stage and it's not waking up very much, but their average heart rate in atrial fibrillation is 150, 160 beats per minute, and they feel like their heart's gonna beat out of their chest, and they're begging for treatment. So we treat atrial fibrillation not just because you're having it, we treat it primarily because of symptoms. And the more symptoms you have from your atrial fibrillation, the more aggressive you're gonna want us to treat it, and the more risk you're gonna to wanna to take to treat it more thoroughly or longer term. The less symptoms you have, the more you might say, look, I'm okay to be in AFib or going in and out of AFib. As long as I don't feel it, and you said it's not directly life-threatening, and we're just treating symptoms, they might be okay with that, especially if you're older and the risks you wanna do least risky to most risky. Number three, unfortunately, there is one other problem with atrial fibrillation that is directly dangerous and potentially life-threatening, and that is every time you go into atrial fibrillation, there is a small three to 5% chance on average that a tiny blood clot might form inside your heart during that episode. 
Now, this applies whether you feel it or not. You can go into AFib and it's not very fast and you don't even feel it, or you might go into AFib and it's super fast and you feel severe palpitations. It doesn't matter whether you feel it or not. Every time you go into AFib, whether you feel it or not, there is this small percent chance that a tiny blood clot might form inside your heart. And if that happened, you wouldn't feel it. And then that clot could break loose, go to your brain, leave your heart, float up to your brain, cut off blood supply to your brain and cause a stroke. So that has to be treated because that's the most dangerous thing that can happen. But once we protect you from risk of clots and strokes, everything else we do is for symptoms. Fact number four, atrial fibrillation is a progressive rhythm problem. And it's one that's caused primarily just from getting older. So you live long enough, you start to develop these abnormal, some patients have called it mutant cells, of, we call AFib, and they start to wake up and make your heart speed up, fine. You have them, it's waking up, it's going to sleep, it's waking up, going to sleep. But every year you get older from that point forward, the AFib cells keep tending to keep slowly forming through age-related changes in your heart. And as you get older, you form more AFib cells. And the more AFib cells you have, the more walls they spread to, and the more you have total, the more often they wake up and the less they want to go to sleep. So the percent of time that you spend in atrial fibrillation actually goes up. And if you live long enough and your AFib progresses for enough years, you might even get to the point where you're in AFib 100% of the time and the AFib becomes permanent. At that point, we cannot get you out of the AFib, no matter what we do. No medicine's gonna be strong enough to keep it asleep. No procedure's gonna be able to get rid of enough of it from the inside. AFib can become permanent. But even if your atrial fibrillation ever becomes permanent, in a sense, that's okay. You're not going to die from atrial fibrillation. As long as you're treated to prevent a blood clot and a stroke, everything else we do is just for symptoms. It's just at that point, we cannot get you out of AFib anymore. So the best we can do is just slow it down and say, look, we're gonna slow it down to a level where you can kind of tolerate it. And that's the best we can do symptom wise, but you're gonna live just as long as everybody else, as long as you don't have a clot and a stroke from the atrial fibrillation.